Hi folks, Don Rowley from the Colorado Springs Bujing Han Dojo with a little video blog on the chain weapon, sometimes called the Manriki Kusari, sometimes called the Kusari Fundo. Actually, there is a lot of names for it in Japanese. Uh, depending on the style, they all seem to come up with a similar weapon, gave it their own name. So, uh, Kusari Fundo is what's most often called in the Bujinkan. Manriki Kusari is pretty much an exclusive uh, name to the Masaki Ryu. Uh, so, don't expect to learn techniques from this. I'm just going to talk about what it can, can't do, the capability, the type of people that did it. Uh, and under any circumstances, do not try this at home. Okay? Some people do that with a neat, neat, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'm serious. Don't, don't try anything unless you've had a real teacher that really knows what it's done. And unfortunately, in the Bujinkan, there's very few people that teach the Kusari Fundo and even less that know what they're doing. So. What is a kasari fundo, manuriki kasari, whatever? Obviously, it is a chain with two lengths at each end. How do you use it? Well, you can wrap people up and you can hit people. Bam! Obviously. Uh, the thing is that who used it? Well, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is basically I was part of a discussion on Facebook and someone said that it was a peasant's weapon. And that's all the excuse I needed to go to have a drink. It's not a peasant weapon. It is used by samurai class. It was basically not used on the battlefield, obviously. But it was used for like security services, you know, police forces, to try to take someone alive. Now, if you think about it, if someone's got a sword and he, they're willing to kill you, and you've got to take them down restrained by the fact that you can't kill them, this is not an easy thing. It took very good, a good amount of skill at this to be able to do anything. And since their lives were on the line in the Edo period, uh, relatively peace, the guys that carried these things put in a lot of time and effort to learn the skills. Now, uh, well, why did they take them alive? Well, that was just the way things were back then with the police and the guards. Uh, if you were a guard at the Shogun's castle, you know, and someone attacked with a sword, he might have been part of a greater plot, and you needed to find out about that plot. You couldn't do it if he died. You know, you take him alive, you take him in, you torture him, and then, okay, when he gives you the other plotters, you kill him. Japanese police, they always had to have a confession. You know, if they did not have a confession, it was like they could not close a case. So if they had to cap capture someone who had just killed somebody, they'd have to take him alive, torture him until he confessed, and then they kill him. Now, he, obviously, why did they just kill him? Well, if you've ever done with, dealt with Japanese bureaucracy, you know the meaning of the term anal retentive. So yeah, it's, it, it's not hard to believe when you've dealt with the police, you know, the, the local uh, city offices and the DMV down there, that, yeah, that's what they need. So these guys basically were trying to take people alive with the Kusari Fundo, Manraki Kusari, but sometimes, they weren't alone. Now, a lot of people get into the whole wrapping people up and all that, and that's all good and fun, but like about 90% of this stuff is just beating the heck out of somebody, and then when they're stunned, then it's so much easier to wrap them up. So yeah, you do do a lot of smacking with this, but you don't do this whole thing a lot, you know, try to do this. It's nice and fancy, great, goes great in movies, but it's not really the main thing you want to do. You want to hit them, you want to get back, you want to basically be back like this a lot of times. <clears throat> Again, beat the guy silly and then wrap them up. It's not necessarily the Kasari Fundo that would have to do the beating. If someone had a six-foot staff, Rokushaku bow, they could just stay out of the line of the uh, swordsman, you know, like get three, four guys with sticks and just beat the crap out of him. And then the last guy with the Kasari, Gama, Kasari Fundo comes in and is able to wrap the guy up finally before they cart him away in an ideal situation. Obviously not all the times it, it was an ideal situation, but that's what they would try to do, teamwork in order to take somebody down. Now, one of the things that my teacher that, you might, that taught chain weapons to me in Japan, you know, he, he made a joke once that if you don't give yourself a nasty bruise practicing with these things once a month or more, then you're not really trying. Uh, at that same class, you know, when I kind of graduated to Kasari Gama, he said, okay, how would you, you know, I picked it up, he said, how would you hurt someone with that? And I basically held the thing, turned to one of my senpai and said, come at me, bro. 
Everybody left because they had all beaten themselves silly with that damn thing when they first learned it. So that's, you know, again, don't try this at home. There's, you know, it's, I, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube and stuff like that teaching this stuff, and I know that they, they've learned from videos because they're doing this or they're doing this, but I don't see them do the transition between one and the other. And there's a transition from this to go the other way. Uh, don't, don't teach this stuff if you don't know it, honestly. I know this stuff. I don't teach it all that much. Uh, but, I, you know, people I know don't know Jack are out there doing YouTube, doing seminars, whatever. It sickens me. <clears throat> oh, another thing about the, uh, the capabilities and the characteristics of a weapon. One of my teachers in the Bunjikan, when he was teaching me uh, sword game, I think it was, but he pointed out that the Japanese word for hidden weapon is pretty similar to the English word. Kakushi means hidden, buki means weapon, kakushi buki. But the downside of that is that's very important. Once you pull this or anything else out and you start doing something like this, it's no longer hidden. The guy knows about it. So it is not kakushi buki, it's just buki. And you've lost half or more of what your uh, advantages of it was. So a lot of times it's not swinging around, it's just like right here, like that. And that swir swirling at the end, you kind of see how it dissipates the force while still keeping it in motion because an object in motion tends to stay in motion. It's easier to do when you're like this and you're on the recovery to come back and strike. But once that happens, then you tend to like put it back here and just, you know, whatever, you try to keep it hidden. So. Big flashy moves, looks great in demonstrations. A lot of the Japanese shihan are, you know, like in Japan, make demonstrations, but in reality, it's more the guy doesn't know you have it until he's like, you know, this is, he's got an imprint of this on his forehead. Uh, another thing, uh, if you, I've translated Sengoku Nimpo Zukan by Masaki Hatsumi, you know, guy for sale. If you look in there, you can find this. I was first told it like within the first three years of Japan, in Japan. Uh, that really the ninja did not use kusari fundo. What they did use was something close. And basically, one of the, the things that a ninja would always try to carry around is a, like a three-foot towel. It's very useful, you know, like, very much like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But what they would do, in some cases, would they take a large rock and wrap one end of the towel around it, and all of a sudden they've got something, an improvised weapon, that they could basically hit somebody with. Now, it wasn't something that you would want to go out on the battlefield against. You know, I, I could just see this, the image of like, you know, 20 ninja squad running out of um, Sekigahara. Uh, uh, yeah. But it is a good ambush weapon. Let's say a ninja went into a fort as, an, as a day laborer and stuck around by hiding, did what he had to do. Now he get it, had to get out. Except now he has to like go over a fence and there's guards everywhere. Comes up to a guard, he's got the whole thing with the towel and the rock, kind of, you know, starts to talk to him, BAM! Then runs over the fence. That type of thing. So that was a ninja weapon. This really wasn't, but the techniques are very similar. You know, the, what you can do with a towel and rock, or just a towel. I mean, you know, like, you, you ever get smacked by a wet towel back in high school? Oh, they could just take skin off of you. So things like that. The Kasari, uh, Kasari Fundo is a very interesting weapon, but ultimately it's not the most lethal, except for maybe the person trying to use it. So if you want to learn about it, go to a qualified instructor. There are damn few in America that know what the hell they're doing. And I'll give you that warning right now. Make sure that you're not one of those guys that like will take one class or watch a whole lot of YouTube videos and then turn around and teach it themselves. Those guys are more dangerous than, you know, some political movements. So I'm just going to leave it right there. That's the Kasari, Fundo, Manra Kasari, history, techniques, characteristics. I hope you all got uh, something out of it. Buy my books!